All right, this is the, I guess this is kind of accidentally the start of the audio journey of, uh, of Obsessed Garage solution providing, whatever that means. I'm a Dyn Audio dealer, and so that means all my stinky old Dyn Audio's got to go, and all my stinky old audio's got to go, and so I'm swapping out all my old stuff out, and this has been on my, I've had this video planned for like, since 2016 when I got these speakers, where well, they were scratched out of the box. And it is polishing, as the title says, polishing uh, speakers, which is not really all that different than polishing paint. Now, I'm pretty sure these are lacquer, which is not a clear coat, base coat, like a car would be. Um, it's just a black lacquer finish, uh, which I found to be quite a bit softer. I'm cheating a little bit because I did it off camera. I um, actually polished these uh, the other day uh, and I'd get them to like, I'd say 75, 80%. These are actually sold. I sold these to somebody, uh, but these are Dynaudio Excite 12s. Uh, what are they, X12s, I think? Excite X12s, which are awesome little speakers. They're like 1200 bucks a pair. Um, I had these in my wash bay for, you know, since 2016. So you can see all the dust and dirt and scratch. So they were slightly scratched. And so I've been like just wiping them off like this for the last, you know, several years, which of course on black lacquer that soft paint scratches it up. Uh, and so this dry wiping thing is something you never want to do to your speakers if you can help it. You'd always want to use some sort of lubricant like a detail spray or something like that. I haven't done that because I've been planning to make this video. Uh, and I've been lazy and I did the same thing in my subwoofer and so now I'm finally making the video because I'm, I'm selling the speakers and uh, I know what works now so I'm skipping a few steps it took quite a bit of testing trial and error to figure out what works so the first thing to do is to clean it up I've covered the tweeter with a you know because they're a soak dome tweeter so I covered that up with a uh, uh, one of the new Dyn Audio speakers I just got I'm gonna have whole video series of buy bought everything they make uh, and then I'm working on SVS and the, on the entry level to create garage audio solutions. Of course, the byproduct is that of that is I can offer some home theater advice to. That was my previous career before my previous career was uh, home theater stuff. It's a huge passion of mine. Uh, and so we can get into the details, but this is CarPro Eraser. So for you audio guys that are watching this, uh, that are, not necessarily car guys that aren't into detailing. Um, this is a isopropyl alcohol solution from a company called CarPro. I sell all this stuff in my store, so if you wanna, you wanna buy this stuff to polish your speakers, this is what you would need, because I know these videos live on YouTube forever. Uh, but these, car, these speakers were like semi-outside. It was a uh, wash bay, but it had like uh, some barn doors. But you can see there's all kinds of like bug funk from cockroaches and stuff climbing over these because it was, you know, it's Florida, it's in the woods, and it was sort of outside. And so there's some, li I found you know, lizards climbing around the stuff and all that too. So I just cleaned it up real quickly here, and now let's start polishing. After I ate my delicious Now lunch. wait a minute, when is this program supposed to start here, Matt? Because this is looking dangerous, Ooh, we just yeah. read this list off. Yeah, yeah. time out. I just said, program. cut that video off right now. No, no, no. This, <laughs> this fat boy. Cinnamon crunch bagel, oh, chocolate yeah. chipper cookie, tulip cookie, green tea bottle, pepperoni mozzarella. Bro. Matt. <laughs> is this, yeah, is this for the team? <laughs> what is this? I'm starting tomorrow. As, as I eat a chocolate chip cookie myself, but. Mm. I need it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eat standing up at least. Okay. Tomorrow will be different. All right, so here's the process to figure it out that works really well. I thought since the speaker was super soft that it would, um, I thought it would correct super easily, but I ended up needing to use wool. And so when you're polishing, um, especially softer stuff like lacquer, you know, heat, heat is something you need to be wary of. Now, this should be thick enough 
or you don't have to worry about blowing through it like you would, you know, clear coat. You'd have to worry. Um, so you can really, you can hammer on it. But um, I found that the wool, wool generates quite a bit less heat than microfiber. And so this is a Rupes uh, coarse wool cutting pad. And I'm using a rather moderate compound in order to correct lacquer. And I found that did a pretty good job. It, it, you'll see, I'll show you in a minute here, it does leave quite a bit of haze behind. Uh, and then that's where the finishing polish will come in. But I mean, you can see, see all the scratches on there? That's embarrassing. This is like a regular person's car, what it looks like. Like regular person speakers. And sorry to the universe for being such a slacker. So I'm just gonna tape off this here. Actually, this sticker needs to come off as well because even though it's a serial number, I do need to take it off because the polish yanks it off. And then these have to come off too. I'm gonna show you an amazing product here in a second once I get the bulk of the sticker and feet off. <clears throat> There's a product that I've been using a lot lately that acetone based it works well at getting adhesive off so I had put these little feet on here and so my rebel speakers that I'm changing out I have rebel performa threes are also gloss black but those have barely a scratch on them because I've been very careful with those Everybody's gonna be real happy with me using Ulex. <clears throat> Stinks up the whole place. Room the towel, you should probably put some gloves on too. But because I'm only doing a little baby section here, should be okay. So in a perfect world, your speakers will come without scratches on them. But in the real world, a lot of times, You'll have lots of scratches on your lacquer or gloss speakers and you just get your car polishing out. Paint is paint. Now, of course, lacquer is a little different than base coat, clear coat, but paint can always be polished. <clears throat> See how awesome this stuff just melts away. Some really sticky stuff. In pretty short order. So polishing won't remove the adhesive. So you need to get this off before we start polishing. All it'll do is gum up your pads and mess them up. So Dyn Audio took some serious convincing for me to get approval. I believe I'm the sixth online dealer in the country, in the US. And the reason I'm able to do it is because we're doing a little different, you know, I'm doing this in garages. And so I had these amazing speakers connected to a Yamaha, two-channel Yamaha receiver. Actually, no, these were on an old Yamaha RXV800. Might even have been an RXV1000 <clears throat> um, receiver, uh, home theater receiver that I had these connected to. They sound incredible. I just think that in the garage, a soft dome tweeter, for me, anywhere, a soft dome tweeter is my, is my preference. But in the garage, we have a really harsh, really terrible listening environment because you'll have metal cabinets and, and if you're lucky, you know, wood cabinets would be, from an audio perspective, I don't like wood cabinets for storage, but wood cabinets would be a little less bright sounding. But you've got metal and concrete and metal garage doors and things like that. So anything you can do to help with the with the brightness 
is a is a good thing. And so Dyne Audio, just I feel like I, I I love the speakers already, but they do extremely well in a garage environment. Okay, so got all that adhesive removed. Be careful with my woofer. <clears throat> I'm gonna tape this off here. No different than if you were taping some trim on your car. I'm gonna tape it around this plastic so I don't get a bunch of polish all over it. This took quite a bit of trial and error to figure out what worked on these speakers. This is called 3M Precision Tape. Good for this kind of application. Okay, so I'm gonna do the back here first. And I'm going to use a rotary. The main reason for using rotary on this back section, uh, I prefer dual action polishing, but as I'm coming up to the edge of this stuff, the rotary is not going to kick against like our, you know, our insignia or a little plate or number plate in the back here. <clears throat> always shake up your polish. Generally always prime your pad. So I'm going to get it on all the fibers of the wool, and then this is going to make a mess. So like I said, on this black speaker, this is going to come out pretty hazy in this step, so we're going to fix that. Why am I yelling? We're going to fix that when we when we get to uh, the finishing stage. This is a Rupes Nano. Little little baby one inch polisher. <clears throat> this section is no fun. The flat one, the flat section we're going to do here in a minute is going to be a lot more exciting. You're going to see a lot more of a result. Okay. Looks pretty good. We'll show you the result when we get on the other sections. I taped this off on the last speaker. So another key here, because this is lacquer, we're removing a lot of material. So I'm gonna blow this out after every section and go out with my air compressor and blow it out. So remember when you're polishing, you're abrading the surface. So this is an abrasive I'm putting on here and I'm removing material as I'm polishing. And so, you generally will need to spray out or, um, I guess it's not spraying, but you know what I'm saying, blow out the pads, especially on a really soft lacquer where I'm likely moving quite, removing quite a bit of material here in order to remove defects. And hopefully you'll never let your speakers go as far as I did. They look like crap. So if I was using dual action here, I wouldn't be able to get right up to the edge of this. It would be smacking into the edge of the speaker. The edge of that lip right there. Those are the boring parts. Now let's do the fun part where we do the bulk. Do the bottom of the speaker and show you how much improvement we'll get out of this. It's really pretty incredible. So I wouldn't advise that you do gloss black speakers in your garage unless you're going to take extra care which I clearly didn't. I did it for the video. It's a five-year experiment. So do the bottom first. Let's so look at that. Pretty janky. Look at how much material we removed. We're going to remove even more here on this section. So this is a three inch XFE 7, 12 millimeter orbit flex polisher. It's a German polisher. The Rupes we're using earlier is an Italian polisher. Rupes also makes a three inch. I just like this one a little better. So 
some of these deeper scratches are just they're not going to come out but we can make a pretty remarkable improvement see like these the speaker was slid on some stands from the I bought these used and so these deep if you can feel it with your fingernail then it's going to be too deep to get out so we've seen a pretty significant gloss obviously gloss and improvement I ought to be able to get the top and sides looking pretty good but there's still there's quite a bit of haziness to the speaker now that we'll remove when we do the finish polishing so I gotta go blow this out okay so let's make our side look pretty here so first we spread the polish around So I need to keep the machine flat because if I don't, notice it'll stop spinning. It's oscillating but not spinning. So I need to make sure I keep the machine flat, take my hand and I push down, apply some pressure. But if I come off the flatness of it, it'll stop spinning. And you won't be doing as much work. And you want to try to avoid coming over on the edge. I'm going to bring the edge of my backing plate up to the edge of the speaker. So I make sure that I get the edge. If I roll over the edge, you'll essentially, you'll miss the, the edge of the speaker. And you'll also risk burning through the, uh, the thinnest part of the lacquer. And wool keeps it pretty cool. Now we don't know how much lacquer we have on here, um, but my guess is it's probably pretty thick. Oh yeah, that's pretty. This is the part that matters. This, the top and the sides matter the most because the front's going to be covered by a grill. The bottom is going to be, you know, on the ground, and the back is going to be behind the speaker. So the sides looks pretty good. Wait till we jewel it up with our finish, finishing polish here in a second. So here's our starting. You got some scratches here, 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 and you know, all from me dry wiping the darn thing. So we'll be able to get most of those out completely. So the reason I'm spreading it around is the polish, the polish is most aggressive because this polish breaks down as I make successive passes. So I want to get equal aggressiveness all the way around. And now I'm going to break down the polish as I'm removing material. I'm removing lacquer in order to hopefully get down below the scratches and improve the finish. So I'm not I'm not reflowing the lacquer, right? I'm not heating it up and moving it around. What I'm doing is removing it. I'm removing material. I can do things to get more aggressive, like pushing down and scrubbing. And then moving around like this doesn't do any good. So you wanna take your time, let the machine work. If you do it enough, eventually you get a feel for what, you know, what speed you need to go. And you can look through the polish at times if there's a deeper scratch below it. And check it out, man. It's darn near flawless. Went from pretty crappy to legitimately clean and newish looking. Well, look at the top. It looks terrible. I think we can clean that up pretty, pretty well. We can blow this out. And so I tested out several polishes, several different pads. I started from least aggressive to this level there you can get more aggressive than this um, and I found that this was the best combination for this type of paint okay still some deeper scratches 
can't feel them with my thumbnail, so I can probably refine them a little bit more. Let's do uh, let's do the little rotary one. We'll kind of spot treat them. So with a rotary polisher, meaning, see how this one? I don't want to make a mess here, but see how this one just spins? So it's a direct drive, or this machine moves in a random orbit. So it's oscillating and rotating. This machine is just rotating. And so with this type of action, the bigger the pad, the more aggressive. The smaller the pad, the more conservative or not as aggressive. With dual action, the smaller the pad, the more aggressive. Uh, and so this is actually gonna be considerably less aggressive. So I don't know if this is even gonna work. Little tool is pretty nifty though. This rotary will also leave quite a bit more haze behind than the dual action will. We're gonna clean all that up in our finishing step. Yeah, I'm probably gonna want to make another three inch pass. Since this is the top of the speaker that you see the most generally. Yeah. And then do squat. Let me blow this out. We'll do one more set of passes and then we'll finish it up. Yeah, it's heating up quite a bit. I don't want to get it too hot. Damage the finish. I think it's going to be acceptable. Okay, let's finish polish it. Which should be a little quicker, a little less thought involved. Make sure you shake it up. This is called Sonex Perfect Finish. And I'm gonna use a white pad, which is a really soft finishing pad from Rupes. This is one of their older white pads, but we're gonna use it up here. So let's do our same process. And this stuff doesn't tend to mark up the, uh, this kind of plastic as much. So I'm gonna take my tape off. Butter my pad. You generally don't butter rotary. You're generally better off catching the bead, but I find on the one inch, it's fine if you do it this way. So when we put a bead of polish down, you you grab that bead. This is also a diminishing polish. Now, not all polishes are diminishing. In fact, that most of them are not diminishing. Oops. Some of them will stay at the same cutting level the whole way through. And I want to make sure I get all that polish out of there. But you never thought you'd watch some dude polish a speaker on YouTube, did you? Well. My wager is in the in the future, many of you aren't car guys, obsessed garage fans, you're just uh, speaker guys. And you too can clean up your speaker and then maybe you can start polishing your car while you're at it. So that's how you polish a speaker with a lacquer finish or a clear coated finish. It's really the same thing you would do on a car surface like I talked about a bunch in the video. A bonus, you could wax it. In this case, I put uh, G-Technic Crystal Serum Light, which is a glass coating, uh, which is a wipe on, wipe off coating. Not so much to protect it from the elements because it'll be in the house, but more um, to make it slicker. Uh, so if you did wipe it, uh, wipe it, you wouldn't, hopefully wouldn't scratch it as easily. So in the future, I would be best served not dry wiping the speaker. Make sure to use some sort of lubricant like a detail spray or a clay lube or a waterless wash. Uh, make sure your towel is, uh, is, is not uh, you know, wiping you know, uh, dust and dirt and debris and bugs and stuff like that across the surface.
surface because you're bound to scratch something that's black. So that's the process. Hope this was uh, of use to you. Uh, I don't plan on polishing many speakers. Uh, I'll make sure to take better care uh, of them as, uh, and, and I, I probably won't be buying new speakers as much as I have had in the past. So uh, my speakers out of the box are usually uh, well maintained. So thanks for watching. I guess this is a crazy one. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. See you soon.